guys, in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what OTR is and what OTR version 2 brings to the table. Uh, one of the big questions I get is, what is OTR and why do I need it? Can't I just install Reaper and make music? The short answer is yes. I, you can download Reaper, have at it. Um, it is an amazing piece of audio software. Uh, one of the great features that Reaper offers is it allows people with the know-how to be able to go in and create scripts on the back end, so some programming side of things, uh, to allow full customization of their audio workflow. That tends to be a little bit of a um, time-consuming process, but it is a customization feature that the other DAWs do not offer and is what makes Reaper so appealing. For me and uh, my personal workflow, it's important to make sure that everything that you do start to finish is as efficient as possible. When you start to get into um, more complex orchestral templates where you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of tracks, it starts to become very cumbersome to load up a project, try to create it, or even to build a template in many of these pieces of audio software. Once you do have that workflow set up, there's still demands in the industry where uh, you may need to render groups of tracks in certain ways uh, for the mix engineers. These are typically called stems. Uh, if you don't have a workflow set up, it tends to be a very cumbersome process. Now, extrapolate that. You're creating a lot of tracks for a movie. Suddenly, you need to make sure that you've got a process in place. The uh, same thing could be said for TV shows. And even if you're getting into just regular pop country, mainstream music production, that type of music still needs a very efficient workflow to uh, not only just create your music, but to render it, to archive it, to save it, to deliver it to the various places that you need it delivered to. Not to belabor that point, but OTR version 2 is a compilation of nearly a thousand custom scripts and actions that are added into the Reaper application. A lot of these things happen behind the scenes. You'll never even know that they're happening. I've also integrated a number of plugins that tend to be popular and tend to be downloaded by a lot of Reaper users. Uh, one of those is called Reticulate. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is yet, um, don't worry, that will be covered in other videos. If you know what I'm talking about, then you're gonna know uh, why Reticulate is such a great addition to Reaper. I worked with the developer of Reticulate to make sure that as I was integrating it in that I was covering all my bases. Um, one of the things that I did was create a user interface for it. Let's take a look at what OTR actually is. Before we get started with this, I'm going to just show you a regular installation of Reaper. This is what Reaper looks like starting out. When you add tracks, they're just very generic tracks. These tracks can accommodate anything. They can accommodate MIDI. They can accommodate audio. They're bus tracks. They're instrument tracks. But it makes it really confusing for a, a user to get started. Uh, you actually kind of have to go down into this routing manager, and you have to tell it what kind of track it is, where it's going. Uh, is it two channels? You know, does it have a group that it's being put into? Uh, am I sending it somewhere? Is it receiving something? Uh, if it's a MIDI track, you know, what? how do you set that up? These are, these are questions that every Reaper user goes through. So one of the things that OTR does is it puts everything at a right click away. You're going to just be able to, in a blank project, and I'm going to create a new project tab here. You're going to be able to right click and you're going to be able to insert a track from a template. For example, you may just want to record a regular audio track. You may want to put an imported track onto um, this track. You may want to create a group folder. You may have a need for a specific MIDI track or um, a video track, an FX track. You may want a virtual instrument. This is predominantly what most composers use, and you're going to end up being able to just navigate over here to the blank category and you have all these different options you've got uh, just a regular stereo out mapped instrument you have them pre-set up uh, with with midi tracks and sub mixes you have them pre-set up with the different uh, samplers now you do have to own the software of these instruments such as contact to be able to use them but if you do have them you own them they're installed on your system when you load up these track templates, they're going to automatically load in the software. So let me, let me be very clear. You do have to own it. You do have to have it installed on your system. But assuming that you do, and most people will have one or some of these installed, if we wanted to create a contact instrument track, we just right click on it. Uh, we'll go to virtual instruments. We're going to go to samplers, 
contact and just add the track itself. And you're going to see that the track gets set up um, with a generic name. There's this little green icon that tells you that it's an active track. Contact is loaded on uh, the track already. And then, you know, if we were to record something um, and then turn around and decide to disable this track or freeze it, um, you've got keyboard shortcuts to do this. You have flyout menus that allow you to de deactivate the track. You get these visual cues that tell you that the, they're turned on or off. Let me reactivate that. If we were to freeze it, it would have a little snowflake. Uh, now this looks like it's pretty simple. It's one track, but you know, for example, let's say that you had uh, a, a pretty good knowledge base as to how to handle um, virtual instruments. And you said, okay, that's cool. I, I use contact and I tend to set up 16 MIDI channels. Okay. That's awesome. Well, you can right click and all of a sudden all your tracks are pre set up all that routing that I was showing you before um, that you would have to manually do uh, such as adding where each of the tracks are going. They're pre set up. The tracks come with icons pre configured on them to let you know what type of track it is. And so all you have to do is put, put your instrument that you want into contact and then click on the tracks and you're ready to go. Now, if you wanted to add something even more complicated, uh, we could go down to the instruments. Let's add contact, but let's actually add a submix with it. So all of a sudden with one click, uh, you're able to have this group of tracks that show up that you have a track folder at the top. Uh, you know, you can just tuck all these guys away. Underneath that, you have your instrument track with contact that has 16 different MIDI channels on it. Tuck that away if you want. And then you have the ability to route all of the outputs of contact uh, back into Reaper itself into their own separate channels. OTR has pre-built templates that uh, when you've got your contact instrument loaded up, uh, you'll see that the output routing map, mixed, close stage, mid, far, these guys will flow into each of these particular outs, VI out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Different track templates have them labeled to mirror this in OTR. Uh, but the point is that all of this information is already set up. Some people ask, why would you have so many MIDI tracks? <laughs> and there are a number of reasons. Uh, you may have a, a violin that has staccato, um, pizzicato, legato, sustains in the instrument itself, and you want to be able to play those on different tracks. So this is one method to do that. Um, some people enjoy processes like articulation maps, and articulation maps are uh, where you would tend to be able to see uh, all of those different articulations in um, some type of a, of a GUI and control it within the DAW. Um, what do I mean here? So, so for example, if we had in this contact instrument, we'll just load up one of these um, solo instruments. And you can see that the instrument itself has different types of uh, articulations. This is what I mean. You have a virtuoso articulation, um, staccato, pizzicato, and such. Uh, and you can add more to, more to the channels here. Uh, these guys, you may want to add tremolo, trills, ricochet, what, whatever you would like to add. Um, you're able to do this in a number of instruments. Now, what you're seeing, I want to emphasize again, you have to own contact, you have to own the instruments. So this is something that, that a composer would already own. If you're looking at this and saying, hey, that's really cool, I want all those things, well, yeah, it is great, but you do have to get those separately. What OTR is, is the workflow. It's not all of the included instruments, and I want to emphasize that. But let's say you do have an instrument like this. Uh, you may want to trigger each of these uh, different articulations without having to memorize which key to push. These are called key switches. Uh, so people tend to map these things out in DAWs called articulation maps. Uh, OTR allows you to do that. Rearticulate is a popular plugin that people tend to add once they download Reaper. So what does it do? Um, so you're able, I'm going to click back over to this project that I'm working on. 
So for example, with Hans Zimmer strings, the 60 cellos patch has all of these articulations, legato, long, long, soft CS, long, super sulpont, and so on. And what it allows you to, to do is as you play, uh, you can just click on the articulations and be able to, to trigger that within the instrument. Again, if you know what I'm talking about, you're probably already familiar with Rearticulate. You're familiar with articulation managers. One thing that Rearticulate has had going for it, but also in it's 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 a good thing and it's a bad thing, is that it is so customizable through a text editor. So, for example, it would look something like this, and this looks horrible. Like I'm. I'm not trying to say anything negative, but you know, it is a, it's a text editor to get all this information there. And you can see that in the one that I'm working on, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on forever. And then you get into this crazy stuff and you're like, oh, there's no way I'd ever be able to program that. Well, so what is OTR? We're going to come back to this next question and we're going to say, okay, let's look at this articulation management solution within OTR. So what I did was I created a, a user interface for this plugin. And it's not the most pretty thing in the world. This is as good as it can be done in Reaper um, right now, today. There are some other things coming out in the future that are gonna allow for uh, much nicer and prettier user interfaces. But for now, this is what I had access to. But the short version is you can come in here and you can at create articulations. You can say what channel they're going to be on, assign a number of rules to it. Again, this will be more uh, discussed in detail in a later video. Uh, and you're able to create up to 128 uh, articulations and quickly apply it. So that's a good thing for starters. Uh, if you've already created a template, and you want to work off of it, I can come down here and say, okay, I liked what I was doing off of this particular patch. Let's just basically do a save as. So I loaded this under a new from existing, um, I, I, the button I pushed up here, that was this guy. New from existing, new, new from existing, edit, delete. And so I can come in here and I can just change what needs to be changed. With OTR, I've also provided a number of templates. If we just start from the new, you can select any of these templates that are pre-built in here uh, that already have a number of typical routing concepts. So if you just are going to load 16 instruments in contact, I'm going to click on that, and you can see that all the options are already selected, and you just have to change the name of it, and you're good to go. I have also integrated this with a plugin called Flex Router. If you are an active contact user, you may have used Flex Router in the past. If you haven't, it's amazing. The creator of Rearticulate created this as well. It allows you to make use of all 64 channels in contact, which is really awesome in and of itself, but the thing about OTR is that it fully integrates the workflow. So the pre-save track templates have options where you can add one with Flex Router already built in a way that talks to the Rearticulate templates that are already built. So everything is already there. You just have to make some minor tweaks. Makes your workflow super easy and much quicker than it ever was before. So that's part of OTR. Another thing, you have this really awesome menu system across the top. Uh, you've got a number of options that give you functionality such as rendering your stems. So uh, you're able to take your groups of tracks. So for example, in this section, I've got the strings here. I have solo strings in this section. If I were having to manually render stems, um, I would have to right click in here, render this to a stem, right click here, render that one to a stem, and you'd have to go through the whole project. And then, and then you may want all your strings rolled up together. So then you'd have to create some method where both of these guys, uh, both of these groups were outputting their signal to a certain place, and then you'd render that. It takes a long time. OTR has built in menu systems that allow you to just kind of click on what you want a stem of. I, I want a stem of this, click, done. If you want multiple stems, you can come over to this side 
and just click one button and it will render all 32 potential stems. It'll render them all at once. It will also render the groups. So you have these roll-ups, uh, like I was saying, where you have all strings. You can assign those to roll-ups, group one, group two, group three, group four, and so on. You're able to handle all of this at the push of a button. Uh, OTR version two provides you the flexibility to come in here and customize all of this stuff. So you can, uh, these are the STEM categories that we were just talking about rendering out. Uh, you can name them what you want. You have up to 32 of them. You have eight groups that you can apply them to, such as these two groups of tracks. I'm gonna render to this group. I'm also gonna add in ethnic strings to the strings group. It's just a routing matrix that allows you to deliver your tracks to your client in the way that they need them, which is a really awesome feature. Something else that OTR does is that it will take your project and after you have tailored this particular project to your needs, so you may, in this project, you may have a traditional orchestral uh, setup. You may end up having something more rock centric or EDM centric, something like that. Uh, so these groups are going to look nothing like that other project. Well, the menu system in OTR, I, in, in, in OTR version one, it applied a, a very rigid set of buttons. You had a strings button, you had a winds button. Now they have this generic naming convention, which is okay. But you also have the ability to click this little guy and it will rebuild all of your menus based on your project. You do have to relaunch Reaper to see this, but I'll demonstrate this really quickly. If I wanted to see all of my menus instead of generic, VIC1, VIC2, VIC3, that's, the, that's these um, gray tracks over here that are my track groups and the roll-ups um, like I was showing, showing you earlier. Uh, there are eight of them. Um, instead of having those as generic and trying to figure out what they are, even though they are labeled on the track, you see it says group one, group two, and such. I can go ahead and click this button. I'm going to click yes, hit OK, reload Reaper. I'm going to open up the project that I just had. Now my project looks exactly the same, but all the menus in OTR now mirror what the project is. So Instead of those generic VIC1, VIC2, VIC3, you now have these wonderful names. And the menu system is not just um, specific to rendering, but it has these um, visibility toggles. So if I wanted to hide this section right here, if I wanted to hide that entire group, I can just come up to this menu, the visibility toggle, turn it off, turn it back on, turn the second one off. So you can hide them all, turn on what you just wanna see. This makes your workflow super easy. You've got a number of uh, methods to manage your uh, mix process with VCAs. You have a number of methods to uh, you know, activate, deactivate, change the status of your tracks, um, hide MIDI, hide MIDI with stuff on the tracks. Uh, they're they're just, just a whole variety. You have the OTR version one color palettes. You have a new color palette, which I really like. These colors were chosen to make them bright and poppy. So you're able to kind of have easy recognition of what type of tracks you're on. The MIDI items themselves, I'm just gonna do a quick record. You know, they're, they're all bright and colorful. Uh, to make each track easy to see. These are types of customizations that the regular version of Reaper uh, does not have. I have rambled a lot, but I hope that you can see all the different functionality that OTR offers. It just basically makes your workflow feel like that you are in a place that you want to work and not having to set things up in the wild, wild west each time you get a project going. It uses industry standard routing practices and based on your level of skill, you can take advantage of that. You can use more simple routing within the template. I haven't gotten into the quad template stuff. That's quad mixing techniques at the push of a button that you can't do uh, without massive time setting up. Anyway, man, this was supposed to be a short video and I feel like it is forever now. So anyway, this is OTR version two. Hope that gives you an idea of what it is. Thanks for watching.